it's time for... Some books worth worth a, a second read, a reread. Okay, thanks, Dennis. Okay, and don't forget that drawing table you're picking up for me. Okay, bye. Once again, from a secret, undisclosed location, hidden somewhere deep in the bowels of historic downtown St. John's, comes in the Library of Graphic Literature. Yay! With me. Oh, excuse me, your gaseous host, Wallace Ryan. Pardon the burp there, couldn't be helped, couldn't be stopped. Anyways, got my English breakfast tea here this morning. Mm, 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 mm. Delish. Mm. And as you heard on tonight's top ten, on the, uh, or tomorrow night's top ten for, uh, uh, Thursday comics. We're talking about uh, ten comics that uh, deserve a reread. So check it out. Thursday comics with me and my good pal Dennis Sosborne, who actually just messaged me and he found this cool little drawing, portable drawing table. That I thought, hey, now that'd be a great thing to have at the have it have handy. Anyways, um, it's been an amazing week for comics. Uh, some great books out and uh, let's do it to it okay uh, well first of all start out with another great book well I'm hoping that it's a great book because just up wrapping it now from uh, Brew Baker and Phillips not Phillips the screwdriver Phillips the artist I've been loving this uh, I've been loving this uh, series ever. Well, I love everything Brew Breaker and Phillips related. Uh, now, what does this one say? A former 60s radical and undercover agent, Ethan is one part Reva Man, one part Private Eye, and one part Wrecking Ball. Now, it's 1985, and things in Ethan's life are going pretty well until a missing woman shows up in the background of an old B movie, and Ethan is drawn into Hollywood's secret on their belly. As he hunts for her among the wreckage of the 1970s. Dun, dun, dun. What a spooky time. I know. I was a teenager during then. And even before a teenager, it was spooky. But like I say, as usual, and this is of course a reckless book, Friend of the Devil. Mm -hmm. uh, like I say, anything per, per, per. Anything from, <laughs> from, uh, from Brubaker and Phillips is is worth uh, definitely worth buying. I have no problem, even though I haven't read this book, even though I'm not sure you know really how good it is, even though it could be bad or could be great, you gotta get it because they're usually great. <laughs> so anyone who's especially if you're a film noir buff, check this out. So I'll show you a few pictures. Oh, and by the way, I may even feature this on today's uh, entry into. Comics Positive. It's a new site. It's kind of like a sister site to Library of Graphic Literature where we just discuss, you know, the uh, the comics we love and all that. But I was I was inspired by Kevin Boyd, the the master of Expo Fan Expo here in uh, in Canada, a, 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 a an integral part of the Canadian comic book community, by the way. And when they're they, they, when they're on you, you should go and support them. Um, but he was talking about, you know, being more positive about comics and that sort of stuff. And it was just like, you know, he got a point. So I figured, okay, I'll start a little group just keeping it positive. So I just, every day I just put in an entry of of a comic I love and I let anyone else post it. So check it out. Comics positive. Let's be positive. Anyway, back to Friend of the Devil. Let's have a quick 
scan, shall we, of of the goodies within, within. Dun, 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 dun. Love the palette too. Working with my friend uh, Paul Tucker has really given me a, a whole new appreciation of color palettes and all that and its use in comics. Of course, it's quite beautiful here. Anyway, I'm not going to show you the go too much towards the end because God only knows there might be a spoiler there. And if there's a spoiler there, you will hate me. Uh, I will hate myself. Uh, others will hate me. There will be groups formed just to hate me. Okay. Oh God, there's a little bit of oval tea it's still on the edge of my tea there. Okay, now the piece de la resistance of this week. Or last week, actually, because these are last week's comics that came in yesterday with yesterday's order. This is a book that I know not only myself, but a lot of people out there in the comic book community have been waiting for for decades. It is Barry Windsor Smith's Monsters. Dun 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 dun. Oh, I'm in love with this book. Can one be in love with a book? Mm -hmm. Sure, one can. If one's a sick little uh, freak like me. But monsters. This is uh, began life as a uh, as an idea he pitched to to Marvel, and of course, of course, they didn't you know really get it. I guess at the time, and uh, he liked it so much he continued on with it. And it's I'm. I'm about halfway through so far, and so far it's gorge. It, it, it's one of the most beautifully drawn graphic novels, I think, in, in North American history, for sure. Uh, I just can't say enough about it. It's, it's the story of Bobby Bailey. Uh, as, let, let's read off the back here. The year is 1964. A lot of looking back these days, isn't there? Bobby Bailey doesn't realize he's about to fulfill his tragic destiny when he walks into a U.S. Army recruitment office. Secretive, damaged, and innocent, trying to forget a past and looking for a future, Bobby's the perfect candidate for a secret government experimental program. An unholy con continuation of a genetic program, program that was discovered in Nazi Germany, Germany nearly 20 years earlier, in the waning days of War II. Anything associated with the waning days of Nazi Germany is never good. <laughs> but anyway... This is, is exquisitely, exquisitely drawn. <coughs> of course, because it is uh, Barry Windsor Smith, who to me is one of the most technically beautiful artists out there today. Uh, it's just every panel is is a masterpiece. Every drawing of a hand, every the, there's there's no one there's no one does it. No one does great hands like he does. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, check it out. This is, without a doubt so far, the best book of 2021 so far. I'm declaring it, okay? One of the best books of the golden age of graphic literature, which we're currently in, which I also declared several times. Pass that on, people. Let's have a look. Now, I'm not going to show you too much because I don't want to get you overstimulated and, uh, and psychotic, but here it is. So, look. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful drawing. Great, one of the great pen and ink people out there. And I always encourage, especially younger artists, to ditch the Wacom tablet and pick up a pen and a brush because you just can't get uh, with a with a computer what you can get with a hand and a pencil and a brush and a nib absolutely gorgeous I mean, look so yeah absolutely stunning beautifully beautifully drawn Barry <laughs> you did it you did it man you did it Yes, set the bar possibly high for the rest of us.
Thanks a lot. <laughs> but yeah, if there's a book that you that you got to, of all the books that I've reviewed in the past few years, if there's a book that you got to get, it's this baby. Oh, I love this book. And I will get through it one way or the other. Oh, I gotta come down a bit from from, from that that amazing art. It's it's got me it's got me floored. It's got me flabbergasted. It's got me short of breath. Which for an asthmatic <coughs> is not a good thing. Woo, 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 woo. What a beauty, hey? So yeah, go out and buy it. There's there is a side edition there a lot rarer than the, the print edition, but we, we ordered up a couple for the shop. Downtown Comics of St. John's Newfoundland, the best comic book shop east of New York City. I'd say that because I'm the manager, <laughs> but it's also, we live, we breathe, we eat comics down there. Well, we don't eat them, but you know, we feast on them. <laughs> and, and, and there's nowhere else you'll find, you know, a comic book store where you have someone like a practicing uh, comic book artist sitting there selling you your comics and talking to you about your comics. Okay, anyway, if there was one other book besides that beautiful, beautiful masterpiece by Barry Windsor Smith that I've been waiting, actually since, because this book I do believe was delayed quite a bit by the uh, pandemic, but if there's one other book that I've been dying and dying and dying to read and just when I seen it in the the, uh, the box there, I, I felt a little bit faint. If there's one other book <coughs> in my mind that uh, greets, that has the same level of excitement for me, it's Trots and Bonnie. Ba -ma -ma -ma. Oh, oh, I'm in love. I'm in love with another book. I'm I'm cheating on monsters with Trots and Bonnie. <coughs> and uh, Trots and Bonnie is bloody amazing. Uh, <clears throat> it, it, it has its origins in the pages of the National Lampoon from the 1970s. So I read these when I was a teenager and they were subversive. They were dark. They, I mean, don't let the innocent <laughs> style fool you. This, this book has some pretty dark sneakers. Uh, it's by the master Sherry Flanagan, one of the early artists, one of the early women artists who really, uh, Really showed uh, showed how it's all to be done, um, and it's 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 not it is not for uh, it's not for children. <laughs> it is definitely not for children. It's not even for some adults. Some adults may be, become over overcome with this, right? You know, and, and it might hurt their feelings. But this this is is a bloody masterpiece. As it says, let's see here on the back. Dangerously funny, charming, and sexy. All of the things I hope to be one day. Jack Handy. Trots and Bonnie is hilarious, poignant, raunchy, gorgeously drawn, and more relevant than ever. Sherry Flanagan is an absolute genius. From Raj Shast. And I've never seen Trots and Bonnie's before and needed it badly. You do too. I'm so glad it's back. Leanna Fink. Anyway, in the 1970s and 80s, National Lampoon was home to not only some of the funniest humor writing, but to many of the best cartoons. So this was right up there with uh, Idol from Jeff Jones, uh, uh, Nuts by Gay and Wilson. Uh, I do believe, I think even Sun, was it Sun Pop ran in that? But anyway, there were a lot of great comics in the National Lampoon. And this was one of my favorites. We, like I say, to, to us, even back, the, even in the 70s, it, it, it was subversive and dark and dangerous. And today, it's even more subversive, dark, and dangerous. So it's uh, it's worth uh, seeing. As it says here, Bonnie stumbles through the mis mysteries of adulthood as Flanagan, one of the few female contributors to National Lampoon, dissects the harsh realities of American life. Dating, sex, politics, and violence are all co confronted with fearlessness and outrageous humor, I'll say. Uh, <laughs> rendered in Flanagan's gorgeous and deceptively innocent, see, I told you, artwork. After all these years, they have lost none of their power to shock and amuse. But uh, yeah, this is uh, this is actually is the first book of Trots Money ever published in America. Long overdue, long overdue. Where have you folks been? So, like I say, along with monsters, this 
This has been a book that I have been waiting for since the 1970s. So like I say, for those of you with a good sense of, with a, a mature sense of humor and uh, a, and a dark sense of humor, both of which I have, this book is for you. You'll find nothing else like it. It's funny, it's dangerous, it's revolutionary. And it even more so today. So check it out and let's have a quick few ganders at some of the interior. There's some black and white and then there's some color ones. One of these is actually featured in the uh, uh, what was it in the uh, comic book confidential film from uh, Ron Mann from the 1980s from the National Film Board of Canada. A great great film so there's some some color color stuff thrown in there so yeah there's a bit of nudity and there's a lot of a lot of a bit of violence <laughs> and some annotations there in the back a little chat there about sherry and uh, but yeah absolutely amazing so if there's one one book you're gonna get this week besides monsters it got to be this one. So if there's two books you're going to get this week, it's Monsters and Trots and Bonnie. Dun 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 dun. Deceptively innocent. <laughs> kind of like me. I'm deceptively innocent. <laughs> Only thing is, I ain't that innocent. <laughs> now, let's round up today's amazing... Actually, today has been a killer day for book three, four fabulous books I mean every every time I try to bring out three good books or three great books but to have three fabulous books followed by a fourth yeah, it's it's pretty good so comics are not dead comics are living comics are positive rock and roll them comics every day and every night okay speaking about every night and every day every night and every day I pray for another fine book from the Library of American Comics, and some days I were awarded. And with this book, once again, I now have a complete collection of the Library of American Comics, which is a must for for any library, museum, anything out there. You got to get the, it's it's just an amazing imprint. Big big. Uh, Big shout out to Dean Mullaney and, and to Curtis Finley and all the great crew out there. Keep keep turning out these books. They're fabulous. Anyway, what we have here is... Oh, I forget which... This is... Geez, what number is this? Uh-oh. Four. I think it's eight or nine. Um, this is... <laughs> I really should check this out before I bring it up. Oh, volume 11. <laughs> so far. Okay, volume 11. Oh, yeah, I'm reading a couple there. That's it. <laughs> okay, so, volume 11 of Steve Canyon. Dun, 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 dun. So powerful, it stands by itself. Woo! Steve Canyon, uh, of course, it's the creation of Milton Kniff, and uh, it's be best known, of course, for Tearing the Pirates, one of the classic strips. And this one's this one's pretty good too. I, I've been enjoying what I've been reading, but just the artwork, uh, the the pacing, everything. Uh, I mean, Kniff was he was a master. There's just no doubt about it. Really, in a lot of ways too, he inspired. And expanded on the Noel Sickle way of doing comics, and many in his past, from Alex Toth to Matt Wagner, Chris Samney, so many, so many others, uh, Frank Cavilla, so many followed uh, in his school of art is what I prefer to think of it as. It's so they they all have a very simple style and a really hard look at, at shadow work and stuff like that. A really uh, subtly and uh, and and the blatantness that's that's absolutely beautiful and same of course too with uh, Steve Canyon it's uh, 
I actually like the the, the very the first opening the the opening uh, sequence in, in book one. I always like because it's they talk about Steve Canyon and it's more or less like where's Steve type of thing, and he doesn't show up. I think he's until the was it the Sunday edition or whatever, but he doesn't show up until a good you know a few strips into. Which was sort of like wow, what a show. So yeah, if you can uh, pick up. Uh, and especially if you can go back and pick up any of the earlier volumes, it's just so, so worth it. These, it's beautifully drawn, uh, the color strips are, are, are wonderful, and the reproduction in this, like all of Library of American Comics books, is mm, fabuloso. So once again, here's another great book. Jeez, it's been a killer week. It's the, all of you, from Image to Fantagraphics to... Who put out this from the New York Review of Comics uh, to the Library of American Comics? You all hit it out of the uh, park this week. And for that, I thank you. We all thank you. Once again, just, should, just goes to show you that comics are still kicking it. And kicking it big time. So let's have a quick look there. There is some of his. And for any students of R2, you'll recognize just how beautiful this stuff is. I love the simplicity of his, his, his spotting with the inks and that. I mean, look at that. Heavy, heavy on the spotting. But absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. Do, 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 do. So yeah, this is this is this is definitely four books that you've got to get out there this week and buy. If only, if only for me. But don't just do it for me. Do it for yourself. Do it for comics. Be comics positive. Okay, all my lovelies. And my darlings out there, mm -hmm. lots of love to every one of you. It's actually a beautiful sunny day here. It's it's actually about 1:20 Newfoundland Standard Time, uh, but it's a beautiful sunny day out there. I got about an hour or two until I have to show up at the comic book shop and start doling out the comic book beauty to to the general public, mm -hmm. which I love. <laughs> So if you're ever in St. John's, check out Downtown Comics. Check out this week's Thursday Comics podcast with me and Dennis uh, Osborne. And my Library of Graphic Literature page. This show, of course. And our brand new Comics Positive. And share it around. Let's, let's get everyone a lot more positive about the art form. <coughs> okay, with that being said, it's time for me to uh, boom tube my way out of here. Uh, <coughs> Keep on reading, and of course, once again, I love you all, and thanks for having me over. Yeah? Yeah? No? Come on, there must be some boom tube available. The Route 6? Oh my god! That must be the third biggest boom tube I've ever seen! Oh god, it's blowing me away! Bye! Ah!